I talk about how Bernoulli's equation basically assumes there's no frictional losses within the flow. How does friction come into play when you have all this moving fluid and each piece can rub against each other? And that's what we encapsulate in this key term called viscosity. Viscosity can be seen as how quote unquote thick a fluid is. But really if you break it down, the thickness quote unquote of a fluid is related to how much friction there is between each neighboring packets of fluid. As it flows, they rub against each other, which makes it look more like molasses rather than something thin and flowy like water or alcohol. So what they're saying is that there is a track and a cart. The cart is moving at a certain speed. There's a certain spacing between the cart and the track, and the track is not moving. So if you were to break this up into a bunch of little fluid, something like that, you can say that this little chunk on the bottom, because it's such a small chunk, any friction force will make it have a speed of zero. Whereas this chunk up here, because it's so light, any friction force will make it rub against and move along with the cart at the same speed as the cart. And then in between, you have this successive rubbing that smoothly transitions between the layers from the full speed to no speed on the other side. And all this friction force, as you can imagine, to consider all these forces between all these layers involves a bit of calculus. But in this course, we're going to focus on applying the results rather than how we derive it in the first place. This retarding force will be bigger if the speed differential between the two layers is greater. If you have more of the fluid by having a big area. And also if you have a very tight spacing, you need to change the speed really quickly. So the less space you have to change that speed, the more effects you're going to have. And then the rest, we're going to encapsulate in this thing with another funny Greek letter, but this is what we call viscosity, which characterizes how sticky each layer is to the next layer for a particular fluid. And you can look these up. In this case, we have air at 20 degrees C, and you can look it up to be that number, which unfortunately the textbook might have a bit of a typo. In any case, that's the right number to use. So our job is just to apply this equation to figure out this force. And just to demonstrate the units, I'm going to expand Pascal into Newtons per meter square. And you can see that because viscosity has got that funny unit Pascal times second, we do in fact get Newtons for our final answer. That's part A. So just to contextualize that a little bit, to compare against the weight, we take this retarding force divided by mg, multiplying by 100 to make it a percent, it's roughly 0.1%. So this gives you a way to quantify the amount of air resistance, and you can see how in most cases we're justified in ignoring this viscous force as we analyze the motion of the cards, as we've always done before. Of course, if you're then moving in water, it gets a little more viscous. If you're moving in honey, those forces start to become significant and we actually have to consider it. So quite typical of physics, we start with the simplest model and then as the situation calls for it, we have to add more and more complication as we deal with more and more complex system. 